So I've asked this uh, lovely question on accepting where I am financially, accept the house that I live in and accept the job. How do I accept these things <clears throat> if I'm not happy with my finances, uh, the house I live in and the job? Well, recognize that, um, so a few things, a few things that I use. One of the great things I really liked about Hawkins and I really got from Hawkins is one of the first levels to get to if I'm feeling conflict around something is neutrality. You know, like if I, yeah, so let's say I'm not happy with the house I live in. So the first place I wanna to get to and get a level of freedom with is to be like, oh, it'd be really nice to move, but also if I stayed here, that would also be nice. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know, I'm in a position of neutrality. It's okay if I move and it's okay if I don't move. Uh, it's okay if I get more money and it's also okay if I don't get more money. Um, it's okay if my job changes and it's okay if it, my job doesn't change. So to get that neutrality. How I often do that? Now, if I want, if I want a, a bigger house and I want a different job and I want to have more money, that's, uh, you know, because I come from an addiction background, then I need to let go of the wantingness energy. So if I feel, oh, I feel this energy, I really want a, a different house, I really want a different job, I really want more money. So this wantingness energy, I'll go, well, I can really feel this energy in me. So I'm just going to sit with the energy. I'm just going to sit and feel this energy. So every day I might sit with it for half an hour or an hour and just keep, you know, uh, letting go of the thoughts, stop identifying with I want a, I want a house, I want uh, a different job, I want more money, stop identifying with the thoughts and just let the feelings be here and just go into the feelings and welcome the feelings up, uh, disengage from the stories and thoughts about it and just try to empty that part of wantingness. Often my level of consciousness will gradually shift as I do this every day and I'll go, and maybe at the end of an hour or 20 minutes of feeling, I might feel like it's not that bad. You know, I feel quite okay if I don't get those things. Um, also, um, something like I place uh, my financial situation, my house and my job into God's infinite light and love. And I pray for miracles and transcendence. Uh, just keep saying that over and over again until, and it feels like you're, you're releasing a burden into God's hands over and over again until it feels like it's not so heavy. So keep doing that like a mantra. Uh, the prayers will come to you, be guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, the other thing I've done, which I really found really helpful, and I wrote in my book, Bulletproof Peace, is if I'm finding it difficult to love a person, a place or a situation, is I do a daily gratitude list anyway. And I start putting on that gratitude list the things um, I love about it. Um, and I remember, you know, I was having uh, resentments against uh, my, oh yes, my mother. I had a lot of resentments against my mother. It's, um, and uh, so I just remembered, like, what, what are the times I'm most grateful for, for having my mother and what did you do for me? And I remember, you know, there were some things she did for me, which really I felt her love. And she used to take me as a kid to Brent Cross Shopping Center, buy me food and allow me to buy any toy I wanted in the whole shopping center. And I really felt a lot of love from her. It was like she took me out, uh, you know, had the food I wanted to eat, then she let me loose in the toy section of, of, of um, I think it was Fennec or John Lewis, and I could just get the big Star Wars toy I wanted. So really that was a lot of love. And I just put that in. So. I just say I, I really I, I'm grateful that my mother took me out when I was a kid and allowed me to get any toys I wanted and to eat whatever food I wanted. And then I'd say that over and over again. So if you have a house, you could have like all the memories you're grateful for in the house. I had my birthday here. I had my son's birthday here. I had a party here. I got to do this thing here. So putting that on a daily gratitude list and uh, job, things you like about the job, it pays the rent. Um, you know, I, I like my colleague here. So if you put those on a daily gratitude list, it keeps reinforcing. Put those things where you really have a lot of emotion, like something really nice happened at work. Put that every day on your gratitude list. Things that you remember that were really powerful. Um, things that are really powerful and emotionally hit you with love in the house. I'm really, I really love my garden and my potato patch or whatever it is. Um, 
uh, and and then you'll start to I found when I put my mother on and things I really was grateful for and, and loved that my mother had done in the past on a daily gratitude list when she would do things that annoyed me it was more and more difficult to hold a resentment or dissatisfaction it was more easier just to shift and let it go and just to remain in a place of love so cancelling beliefs feeling feelings doing a daily gratitude list um, you know, feeling the, uh, feeling the feelings out, trying to get to a place of at least neutrality. It's okay if you stay and there's lots of lovely things if you stay and it's okay if you move and it could be lots of lovely things if you move. Um, you know, it's also great, you know, I remember Hawkins talking about money, like if you've got too much money and too many things, you, you've got more worries to look after. So sometimes it's nice to have less. Um, and, or if you've got a, a more powerful job, sometimes it's more pressure than the job you've currently got. So all kinds of things to, to get gratitude, to clear it. One of the things I always do with things that I find difficult is I try and disappear it from consciousness. Just keep canceling, feeling it out until it, it's a non-issue to make it meaningless. Uh, you know, is the bus too meaningful? Is the, um, is the job too, is money too meaningful? Um, you know, so if you dissolve these, these the, all these things are not meaningful. Keep to, uh, to keep doing that, and then it's like you take up the specialness out of money, out of work, and out of job, or as you do Course in Miracles lesson, and then you know you open yourself to a high level of consciousness and just allow miracles and light into these situations. Okay.